do diamond planets exist? And if they do, would it be possible to mine or extract the diamonds? Or is it just going to be pretty to look at? Well, I'll start with we have to define what we actually mean by a diamond planet. Are we talking about a planet with some diamonds? A planet made mostly of diamonds? A planet that is virtually all diamond? Well, the first one of these is easy to deal with. The Earth, of course, is a planet with some diamonds, and there's certainly going to be planets like the Earth with more diamonds than the Earth actually has. One day we may visit and possibly be able to extract many minerals from, including diamonds. Now, for a planet to be made almost completely of diamond, you of course need a planet with a very, very, very high concentration of carbon and very little of any other element present. The way planets form, they can absorb material ejected from the star they orbit, but also have substantial amounts of interstellar dust and asteroids in their makeup, which will be bombarding them. That material will be a combination of different elements. A planet made almost completely out of diamond is not really going to be a reality. But even speaking of a planet made mostly of diamond, this one may get a little bit strange. Now, first, we need to look at how various elements are actually created. In a large star, mass of the star, crushes together hydrogen until it fuses to get the other elements. Basically, the larger the star, the more of the heavy elements the star can create before it goes supernova and scattering the elements over the local area of space. What this does mean, though, is that near the beginning of the periodic table, as far as its atomic number is concerned, more of an element is likely to exist in that particular region of space. The basic process is that hydrogen is fused to create helium, Helium is fused to create carbon, carbon is fused to create neon, neon is fused to create oxygen and silicon and iron, at which point the star can run into problems, since the elements now being created use up energy rather than producing them, the star will start to die. This means that elements of a greater atomic mass than iron, like say gold, are very, very rare in the universe. So carbon is one of the commonest elements in the universe. Carbon still is outnumbered by the other elements which is normally mixed in with. How do you increase the concentration of carbon in just in a particular location like where the planet's going to form? Well, this is down to how the new star forms from the debris of a previous star. As the new star starts to form, and drag in material from the surrounding area, it starts to spin. The more material it drags in, the faster it actually spins. Now, for in order to a star not to kind of spin itself out of existence, is where we have the conservation of angular momentum. The basic means if the star ejects some of the heavy elements as it's spinning, the rate at which it rotates slows down. These heavier elements then can settle down and become the base of the planets which orbit near the star. The composition of the planets particularly depends upon the size of the old star the new star is actually made from, to determine what elements are actually present and also in what proportions. Other factors include how large the new star is and what distance the new planets actually form from the star. So for instance, the Earth is largely made up from iron and oxygen, with elements like silicon and magnesium making up small but significant amounts, relatively tiny amounts of all the other elements. So it's possible that in the right conditions you have a planet fairly easily with the majority of its mass being made up from carbon. This might be the case in a planet called 55 Cancri E with 55 Cancri in a star about 41 light years away. Those stars seem to have significant amounts of carbon present relative to the other elements, and especially relative to oxygen. It's possible the planet might meet the elemental requirements for a diamond planet. However, just because you have a planet made largely out of carbon doesn't mean that you then have a diamond planet. You also need extreme heat and pressure to force the carbon atoms into as small a space as possible resulting in the formation of diamonds. When the planet does meet these requirements, or at least does beneath the surface of the planet. The mass of the planet is predicted to be about eight times that of Earth, so it's enough mass to crush all the carbon together. It's also expected to have a temperature of over 2,000 degrees centigrade. This together would certainly be enough to turn substantial parts of the planet to diamond. However, there's always going to be some proportions of other elements present. The surface of the planet may not have the appropriate conditions for creating diamonds. What this does mean is that you likely have a combination of graphite and granite with some diamonds in an outer shell around a deeper core of up to 90% pure diamond. 
Even then, the diamonds not going to be the sparkling diamonds you see in jewelry shops. So they're likely to be resembling the colour of a cloudy quartz. So the planet itself won't look particularly bright or sparkling. In fact, it may look rather dull. And some of the more observant of you may notice several problems if you're thinking about visiting to pick up some diamonds to sell. Firstly, there's the distance, then the temperature and the pressure. So even if you're able to get to the planet and somehow survive long enough to extract some diamonds, getting off the planet with a substantial pull of the planet's gravity would also produce a massive problem. Well, since carbon is such a plentiful element in the universe, you really need more diamonds than it makes far more sense to artificially create them on your own than thinking of extracting them from a diamond planet. Still, it's nice to dream.